So today we're going to spend the next oh, 45 minutes to an hour going through one shopping cart and I'm just going to teach you some quick uh, tips and tricks on um, using one shopping cart, some of the common things that people do in one shopping cart, and really kind of just give you a foundation of what the tool can do. So the agenda will give uh, a quick introduction. And looking at the list of intendees, I think most of you know me, but I'll just do a quick introduction in case those who are listening on the phone, uh, on the webinar, uh, the recording, uh, don't know who I am. And then our, our kind of our agenda for today is just really talking about setting up one shopping cart, um, looking at autoresponders, broadcast, and products, which is the bulk of what one shopping cart can do for you. And then any questions and answers, and then we'll talk about um, what's coming up later. So a little bit about me. My name is Susan Mershon. I am the Techie Mentor. Uh, I'm a virtual assistant coach as well as a uh, technology trainer. And basically my specialty is helping virtual assistants and solopreneurs, you know, create a successful business by teaching them technology and tools to do so. Um, I was a VA for just over four years and I've transitioned now into being more of a coach and a trainer, which I truly enjoy. Uh, and my expertise, actually, when I first started um, working in virtual assistant was one shopping cart. So I've been using one shopping a cart for five years and I use it as a business owner as well. So I'm very well versed in it. I know what it can do. Uh, it is truly a wonderful tool. But if you want to know more about me and my um, whole story, you're certainly welcome to go to techiementor.com and, and take a look at the about us page and it will tell you a little bit more about me. So again, welcome, everybody. So we're going to do some quick training in one shopping cart. But first off, I want to talk to everybody to make sure we're all on the same um, playing field, so to speak. A lot of people don't realize that one shopping cart is not only a shopping cart, but it's also an email marketing solution. Uh, one shopping cart is a kind of a one big solution, if you will, for online business. And actually, believe it or not, one shopping cart has over 3 million clients. So it is a very well-known tool. It's been around a long time. As I mentioned, when I first started off as a virtual assistant, um, one of my clients needed one shopping cart support and I learned one shopping cart and became, if you will, a one shopping cart VA. That was my expertise. So one shopping cart can not only do e-commerce, which is have you know a shopping cart and allow you to um, purchase products either through using a, a merchant account uh, such as authorized.net or PayPal. So again, I use one shopping cart for my business and I, at this point, I'm not using a merchant account. I'm just using PayPal and it hooks to PayPal nicely. So with one shopping cart, you can actually have multiple what are called payment gateways, which are, you know, the processing um, firms, if you will, of the payments that are made through your shopping cart. But you can also use it as an email marketing solution. So those of you who are familiar with Aweber, Constant Contact, uh, MailChimp, um, this is kind of the, a step up and away from that. So instead of having a shopping cart, like one shopping cart and a Weber, which I had a lot of clients do, they didn't realize that they could actually incorporate everything into one tool. So why pay for one shopping cart and a Weber when one shopping cart can do it all for you? Now, one shopping cart isn't as intuitive as a Weber, but you have to realize that it's really a shopping cart with email marketing built in. So again, so for those VAs that are listening and for those solopreneurs or business owners that are listening, realize that you don't need to have two tools when you're working with one shopping cart. You can get rid of your constant contact or your AWeber or your MailChimp because one shopping cart can do that for you as well. So you can use it strictly as an email marketing tool and you use it with, you know, you have broadcast um, and autoresponders just like you do in AWeber or um, constant contact. OK, so I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that because that came across as a common conversation I would have with people because they're like, well, I didn't know shopping cart could do that. Well, yeah, it can. So you could easily import your contacts from your current email marketing system, whether it again, and I'm just using Aweber, Constant Contact and MailChimp because those are the, the big three at this point. But any other tool that you're using, you could easily import your contacts directly into one shopping cart. 
and then you know start using the, that one tool to do everything. And the other thing that one shopping cart can do for you, not only is it an email marketing solution and a shopping cart, it also has affiliate management in it. So some that's also known as referral partners to some people. Um, but what that allows you to do is have one solution to do all of your um, online business management when it comes to product or, or even services, because I use it to sell not only physical products and training, I use it to sell um, services as well. With affiliate, the affiliate piece of um, one shopping cart allows each affiliate to have their own link. Now there are tons of other affiliate programs. There's ClickBank, there's um, some uh, plugins you can use for WordPress. But my point is, is if you're going to use one solution, and everything's in one house, one shopping cart is a great way to, to do this. And one shopping cart is also, if you will, the stepping stone before most people make the leap to Infusionsoft. And, and my story was, again, I was a one shopping cart expert. That was my VA. That was what I was known for until I had a client that we kind of went together and we moved from one shopping cart over to Infusionsoft. And then I became an Infusionsoft VA. That was my specialty. Um, and those are really the two things that I really supported the most besides WordPress in my VA business. So, but my point is, is that you want to use one shopping cart until you've outgrown it before you make the leap to Infusionsoft, because Infusionsoft is an even bigger, bigger monster than one shopping cart. And, and don't get me wrong, Infusionsoft's a great tool. But as a VA and as a business owner, most people only use a tenth of what Infusionsoft can do. And it's a lot larger expense than one shopping cart. So just kind of some tips for you, for those of you who may be new to one shopping cart or who, who have heard of Infusionsoft, maybe thinking about going to Infusionsoft. And, you know, VA is for you. If your clients ask you, well, should, do I need Infusionsoft? Now you can, you know, honestly look at them and say, well, really is your business mature enough to take advantage of all Infusionsoft has to offer? Because Infusionsoft is also known as Confusionsoft because it is such a large tool, but it is a wonderful tool. All right, so just kind of giving you some background there on one shopping cart and what it can do for you. So let's talk real quick about some setup tips. When you're working in one shopping cart, as I mentioned, um, it only it, it not only does um, your your shopping cart, but it also does your email marketing. So the when you're setting up your shopping cart, you're going to want to brand it to your business. So for those of you, and I see a few, a lot of you that are my clients, and thank you for being here. And, and those of you who have purchased things from me in the past, you know, when you go through my shopping cart, it's branded to the Techie Manor. So same thing, when you go to create or set up your own shopping cart, you're going to want to make sure that you brand it. And one of the benefits of having a shopping cart instead of using PayPal, right? Because I use PayPal, I just use it through my shopping cart, is that you're not you're not leaving, it doesn't look like you're actually leaving the website, right? It looks like you're staying within my website when you go to check out. And that gives people sometimes um, kind of a warm fuzzy, right? They're not just being pushed over to PayPal. They're, they're actually going through a shopping cart. Now, PayPal has, over the last few years, you know, expanded some of the same tools that one shopping cart has. Um, the real big difference is with PayPal, you don't have the ability to do a lot of the email marketing um, and the tracking that you'll be able to do within a shopping cart. Okay, so point is, is when you set up one shopping cart, you're going to want to give it the, the look and feel of your business. And you can actually, um, ha you have, a, if you have multiple businesses, you can actually have multiple brands within um, the, the cart. So you set up what's called the cart look and feel, and that sets up everything, you know, your colors, your logos, you, what, what do you want to show in your shopping cart? Do you want them to have, you know, how, how did you find us? Were you referred? Um, you could even have things like, um, you know, checkout policies, um, user policies, things that people may have to read. Like, for instance, if you um, use iTunes and, you know, when you go to download a new iTunes or anything from there, you have to accept the policies. You can do the same thing in a cart in one shopping cart. So you have a, a lot of flexibility with one shopping cart. There's so much that you can do with that. So that's really called what's called the cart look and feel. So you're going to brand it to your business. Now, payment gateways, as I talked about, if you're going to use it for truly a shopping cart, then you're going to need to tell it how you want to get paid. And you can use it with a merchant account, which 
you know, I just have not gotten to the point where I'm ready for a merchant account yet. But one of the one of the ones that I recommend and the ones that I've used the most is one called authorize.net. And it is a merchant account that you can easily incorporate with um, one shopping cart. And then if you move over to Infusionsoft, it'll go right along with you because it works with it as well. But for those of you who like PayPal, like myself, and I know there's a lot of people who don't, but I've used PayPal since I went into business. I don't have any issues with it. I use the shopping cart and I attach it to my PayPal. And PayPal has several, several different um, available uh, levels, if you will, um, for you to use. And one of the nice things about a shopping cart is you can set up recurring payments. And one shopping cart can do that for you with PayPal. So if you have a coaching program or a membership program, you can set up recurring payments within one shopping cart instead of having to remember to bill people manually, which, you know, if you have to do that, a lot of times it might slip your mind. And that's not a good thing because you're not getting paid for a service that you're providing. But with one shopping cart, you have the ability to set up those recurring payments and you can do that with PayPal and you can also do that with a merchant account. So with your setup, you want to set up um, all your all your branding, and then you want to set up your payment gateway, gateways, which is how you accept payments throughout. Now, I see I have a couple of questions. Sean, thank you for the, the message. And Sue, Susan, I don't understand why you still use PayPal when you are using one shopping cart. I thought it was either one or the other. No, it's not one or the other. Um, the reason I use one shopping cart is because I don't, I don't, I want it all in one package for my business, Sue. I don't want to have to use Aweber and PayPal and and then have to worry about pushing. Now, now, trust me, things are a lot different now than they were four years ago when it came to working with PayPal and some of the other tools are getting closer. But I want one thing that I can do all my affiliate management and I can do recurring payments. I can do autoresponders. I can do broadcast. I can send out my easing. I want one tool that I pay to do all of these things. And so, no, it's a misconception that you it's not a one or the other you can use PayPal and you can connect it to your one shopping cart account. So, and that's exactly what I did when I left a Weber and went to one shopping cart, I just connected PayPal to my account. Does that make sense, Sue? So great question, by the way, because that is another common misconception. So PayPal is my payment. Yeah, so Sue, uh, kind of PayPal is my payment system. Just like if you have an merchant account, so you may have clients that have a merchant account, Sue, like authorized.net. My payment account, what I use to get paid through one shopping cart is PayPal. So Donna, so one shopping cart is a software that works with one sh with PayPal to put the money into your account. Yes, that's a great way to think of it. Mm -hmm. So you know how when you pay for things in PayPal, right? You usually go through pay directly through PayPal to do it. Well, one shopping cart puts a face on that. So when you buy something from me and you click the the button to buy it, it takes you to my shopping cart interface, which is branded to Techie Mentor. And then when you click on the button and fill everything out, then it will transfer you to PayPal to make the initial payment. But everything funnels back through one shopping cart to a allow me to do all of my tracking and see, you know, I, I get so much more uh, reporting capabilities in one shopping cart because I can see what products are selling, what products aren't, you know, those type of things. So great question or great, great statement, Donna. Thank you. Okay, good, Sue. So that's, uh, you understand that. Okay. And again, I know that's kind of something that's confused some people in the past, but you can use PayPal with one shopping cart, no problem. So you don't have to upgrade to a merchant account in order to use PayPal. That's another misconception, just like some people think you have to have a Weber and one shopping cart, and that's not true. Sean, does one shopping cart transfer names from a Weber for the email marketing area? Um, what do you mean by transfer names? You mean contacts, or do you mean actual names of um, the list that are in um, a Weber? Just so I'm clear, Sean. The names, it does, it brings the um, contacts directly over when you do an import. Yes. 
Now you have to create the buckets that they go in in one shopping cart, just like you created the buckets in, in a Weber. But yes, the information will come across. Uh, Judy, I wondered if the opt-in goes with the transfer or does the person have to opt in again? Good question. With one shopping cart, this is, a, this is a hiccup that I personally don't like and some of my clients didn't like. But when you import anybody into one shopping cart, they have to opt in again. So this was my, and that's a great question, Judy. Thanks for asking that. I was originally an AWeber client and I had about 100 or 200 people on my list in AWeber when I decided that I wanted to move to one shopping cart because I knew I'd have to have everybody opt in again. And because I knew that I wanted to start selling products and actually have affiliates. And I actually wanted one solution to do all this for me. And again, being a one shopping cart VA and knowing everything one shopping cart could do, it was just the right decision for me. So when I moved over, I only had 200 people on my list. So it wasn't a big deal to have them opt in again. But if you run into clients that have, you know, 5,000 on their list in constant contact, they're not real happy about the thought of having to import them all and have them all reopt again because they're going to lose anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of those people because they don't want to opt in again. So you will find as a VA and as a business owner that there are people who pay for their constant contact list just to send out their easing and they pay for their one shopping cart piece. But the problem with that, again, is it's and you know, if those of you who know me, I'm an organization freak. It's just inefficient to have two systems, but I understand why they don't want to have everybody reopt in. So my advice to my clients when I was a VA and and I'm even a technology coach now, I give the same advice to clients, is if you know you're going to be doing products and you're going to be wanting to do affiliates and you want an all-in-one solution, you might think about moving over to one shopping cart before your list gets so big that you don't want to have to worry about losing people. Okay, so Judy, hopefully that was a long-winded answer to your question, but hopefully that answered it for you. If not, let me know. Janice, do you use a separate CRM? No, um, uh, I don't use a separate CRM. I keep everybody in here. Now, that's a great question, Janice, is if everybody is hopefully aware of the can spam law, right? So that means you can't just put people on your list because you have their business card. So for people who are not on my list, which is what my one shopping cart is because it's my email marketing system, then I use a separate system just to keep track of their information. And that way, especially people I need to follow up with that I've met locally. Um, and I use a system called Zoho, Z-O-H-O. -O. It's a free CRM for that. But if, if they've said yes to be on my list and they go on my one shopping cart. So hopefully, Janice, I answered your question. Um, Judy, will the shopping cart look carry over for a personalized email template or will I have to design a separate branded email template? Um, great question, Judy. Um, the shopping cart look doesn't carry over to email templates, no. So you don't have the beauty, the beautiful templates that you have in AWeber or, or uh, MailChimp. But if you know HTML, you can use an HTML editor like Dreamweaver, which is what I do. My easing is all HTML based and I just do my easing in HTML and then copy and paste it into um, one shopping cart and then I create a template that I use each time. So one shopping cart is a little more advanced when it comes to templates because it doesn't have the beautiful things that you see in straight email marketing tools. Hopefully that makes sense. And you'd want to do the same thing, Judy, for any branded broadcast or, or um, autoresponders that you wanted to do because it is HTML based. Oh, Sue, thank you. Totally agree. Heard the bad stories about losing many on list. Yeah, so it's a good thing as a VA for those VAs listening. If you decide you want to, you know, become a one shopping cart VA, which is a great thing to do because it is a high skill to have, a, a much needed skill to have. And I, you know what? And I know this as a business owner now because I'm looking, I was looking for someone to help me in one shopping cart, but I couldn't find anybody who didn't know it. So I took my VA that I have now and I taught her what I needed to know. So I know as a business owner, there are needs to have one shopping cart VAs. So Janice, yes, great. And Judy, yes. Okay, great. So back to setup tips. Um, so we talked about the payment gateway. Let's talk about naming convention. All right, again, I'm putting on my VA, my VA hat now. Um, it's so important for business owners to have a naming convention, naming standard, whatever you want to call it for, for your products and your autoresponders. And here's why. As a VA, I remember I had two clients and loved them both, they, but they were on the opposite ends of the spectrum when it came to organization. One, her 
her shopping cart was beautiful. I took over for another VA. And when I went into her shopping cart, I understand exactly what it was that all of her autoresponders were for. I had another client that had literally 300 autoresponders and I couldn't make head nor tails of what they were for. So I had to spend a lot of time cleaning up her shopping cart so people could understand what it was that she does. So my point is, is when, for those of you who will be thinking about becoming a one shopping cart VA or for, for business owners, you, you're just going to want to have a, a kind of a naming convention. And I'll show you mine here in just a minute um, of what I mean by that. But you're in one shopping cart, your autoresponders are just like your list in AWeber or MailChimp. Your autoresponders, they're actual buckets. They're called autoresponders, but now actually they just changed the name. They're called campaigns now. But basically what they are is it's the bucket of people that you're sending information to or that have purchased something for you. So you want to have a naming convention when it comes to your autoresponders and products because it's easy for people to understand then what exactly they are, especially if you sell different things. Like I sell services and I sell products and I just want people to be able to understand what the difference is if they were to look in my shopping cart. Okay, so let's talk about, and I'm going to show you my, my uh, shopping cart here in just a minute, but I want to kind of lay the groundwork first. So an autoresponder, just so everybody knows, is a triggered message. Um, it is triggered by something. It's either triggered by a purchase. Um, it's triggered by, um, you know, somebody purchases something, somebody signs up for something. And basically you would send them maybe a thank you or maybe you would send them your whatever free offer or whatever it is they purchased through the autoresponder. Now, some people do that and some people don't. Um, you know, I don't know if there's truly a best practice for that. Um, but that's what an autoresponder is. So you don't schedule an autoresponder. You basically say, okay, when this when this trigger happens, go ahead and do this with an autoresponder. And then you can set up multiple autoresponders and have a delay in how they're delivered as it goes through. Yeah, just like the, the emails that you receive um, when you signed up for this, you got an email that says, you know, you're all set. Here's the link to go to go to webinar and sign up for the webinar. So that's an autoresponder. So but, but you can have multiple autoresponders. So I could have one that says when, you know, Deborah signs up today and then two days later, send a follow up email. And then two days after that, send another follow up email. So those are what are called delays um, for autoresponders. And again, have a naming convention for what they represent, whether it's a purchase, whether it's a sign up. And that way it just keeps your your. Um, your system very clean. As it gets bigger and bigger, your VA will appreciate that. So broadcast, broadcast, those are messages that you, it's just like sending an email from Outlook, right? Um, it's the same idea. The difference is um, you can schedule the delivery of a broadcast. Like I send out reminders and I you know, a lot of times we'll do those a week before they even need to be sent out. I can just put them in and forget about them. Same thing with like if you send easings to clients. That's a broadcast in one shopping cart. So remember, we're talking on broad uh, one shopping cart terms now. OK, and every every tool has their own terminology. So we're talking the terminology right now that one shopping cart uses. So broadcasts are something you can set delivery for. And again, you can have a naming convention for these as well. Um, but a lot of times it's easy to see what they're for if you look at the subject line. And the nice thing about, again, one shopping cart is you get the same statistics that you would get in an email marketing system on click throughs and opens and all that good stuff, um, as well as bounces, all of that same stuff you have in here, um, just like you would in an AWeber. Okay, one more thing is the products. Now with products, you want a naming convention and the nice thing about one shopping cart is you can do categories. So you can actually assign um, products to categories. Like I have a coaching category and a, a teaching category. Um, and it's easy because then I can use coupon codes and I can assign coupon codes to a, an entire category versus just one product. So coupon codes are a way that you can give out coupon codes for specific items, whether it be a coaching product or a, a purchasing product. And so that's a really cool feature of One Shopping Cart, which I like because you can give it as perks um, for people to get percentage off of things. And then you, the nice thing about coupons is you can, you can set them so they don't work when they're on 
when something's on sale, they can't use a coupon code to get more off, or you can use a coupon code to only be for one product versus several products if they buy them all at the same time. And there's a lot of flexibility with, with coupons when you're working with products in one shopping cart. Okay, so that's kind of the basics. Now, what I want to do is jump you over to my shopping cart. Okay, so this is my shopping cart, okay? And I'm going to take you real quick into the back end of my shopping cart. And you'll see really quickly, I have 82 autoresponders. Now, and they're called autoresponder campaigns in here. And what they basically are, each one of these that you can see here, and I have a lot of them, each one of these is a bucket. So think of a list in AWeber or Constant Contact or MailChimp, right? You create a list for a specific group of contacts. It's the same thing in One Shopping Cart, except they're called autoresponder campaigns. And they serve two purposes here. They, they serve as a way to create autoresponders, but they also serve as a way to segment your list, which is something you always want to do. You don't want to have just one huge list. I mean, you can send everything to everybody in your list, but you want to segment the list because you talk to people differently depending on whether they're clients or their prospects, right? And so you need to be able to distinguish between those. Now, with one shopping cart, there's a couple different ways that you can do that. Notice I have my list of campaigns, which are my buckets, if you will, of people. How many messages are in each one? How many subscribers are in each one? How many people have been removed, right? So unsubscribes. What type they are. Shareable just means if you have multiple um, One Shopping Cart accounts. Not, so not sharing within the same account, but um, if I have two different Shopping Cart accounts, I can share my autoresponders between it so I'm not recreating the wheel. You have reporting, and then you have um, you know, how you can edit and copy and all that kind of stuff. So in here, notice I have a naming convention, and, and this naming convention makes sense to me and, and anybody who works in my One Shopping Cart because I set it up. So CC was my uh, Clever Collaborations, which was my VA business. This was when I first started what I started using it for. And then as I kind of um, moved over to Techie Mentor, and things kind of change for me. So anything with a TM is Techie Mentor and TL is Techie Mentor Labs, and it's just for my own naming convention. And then I have signups versus purchases, right? And that's just a way for me to very easily look at how to um, manage the, you know, I have five pages of these. So it's very easy for someone to come in here and say, oh, okay, well, I understand what this is for, right? So let's just walk through creating a new. So I went under email marketing and I went into autoresponders. And I can just click create new and I'll just take you through this real quick. But this is basically what you're creating, okay? Again, this is a shopping cart system that has email marketing with it. So it's not as user friendly and intuitive as you're going to find a Weber to be or a MailChimp to be. This one's going to take a little more thought. But basically the campaign name, and this is where you would use your naming convention. So I'll just go in here real quick. Okay, I would put, now I put TM for my Techie Mentor. But what the other thing that I do is if it's a sign up or a webinar, I would put sign up versus webinar versus purchase. And, and it's your naming convention and your or your client's naming convention. So you determine what you're going to say. So I can just say sign up. And sign up to me just means it's a free. Okay. And then the autoresponder ID will be filled in by one shopping cart. It's a unique identifier. That's how it identifies um, when you start doing forms and things like that. It easily identifies where people land if they sign up for something or buy something. Description, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, whoops, can't spell. And then these options, you can have what are called featured campaigns, which they basically um, are a glorified campaign. D direct sub subscribe, you want to leave that off because you want to be able... No. I don't want to get into these really heavy duty things, but basically we'll just do a real quick, easy autoresponder. So you're just going to want to fill in your campaign name, your um, description, and then the rest of these I would just leave off for now, but I'll just tell you what unsubscribe from. It allows, if somebody purchases something, it would allow you to unsubscribe them from, let's say, the, the list where you were actually um, 
sending out promotional information. You don't want to send something to somebody that's already purchased something. So this would allow you to unsubscribe somebody from a list. So you're not sending them information you don't want to by accident. Um, from email, pretty self-explanatory. From email. Now campaign type. Okay, there's different campaign types. And this is another way you could segment your list. And this is another way that you could send broadcast out. So I could send a broadcast to everybody who's considered an affiliate versus somebody who's on my newsletter versus a customer versus a prospect versus internal, which would be somebody who's on my team. Um, not current, which means they're not um, a current subscriber and then other. So for this, these are going to be prospects because this is a free webinar and a lot of people don't use campaign types and they, I think it's because they don't understand what it can do, but there is a power to this because it can easily help you send specific broadcasts to a specific group of people. Shareable, this again, you can turn that on, but this only is in effect if you have multiple one shopping cart accounts. And then right here at the bottom. When you sign up and start to use one shopping cart, the double opt-in feature is on by default, right? So everybody know what double opt-in means. It means that, for instance, if Deborah goes to my website and signs up for this webinar, she clicks on the button that says, yes, let me register. So that's, that's an opt-in. That's one. But then what happens is my shopping cart would send her an email saying, well, in order for you to get the information I promised, you have to click on this link, right? Click the link. And then she would get the information. So that second click the link was, is what's called a double opt-in. I turned off the double opt-in on my account in one shopping cart. But you need to realize that it's on by default. And if you leave it on, you have the ability to tweak the templates. But one shopping cart has to bless anything that you change before it will use it. So just keep that in mind. And so that's why mine says you currently do not have opt-in verification on, which is, again, that double opt-in piece. So I'm going to save what I've done. Okay, and I go to the second step. Now this second step, I can either choose a text-based message, which means there's no formatting, there's no images, there's no branding, it's just a basic text message, or I can do HTML. Okay, and notice the difference in the actual um, editor window changed. I got all these buttons, okay? For this, you basically want to say, okay, how many days delay? So this is how many days is it delayed before it's delivered? Now, this is the first message, so I'm going to leave that at zero, okay? Um, and then subject line, whatever it might be, right? Your subject lines are really what you need to watch if you want to keep things out of spam filters because it, it, a lot of times that's what it looks at. All right, so this little section right here, is the um, the message body now just like WordPress you know how you copy you can't you're not supposed to copy and paste directly into WordPress you need to do it through notepad or text edit it's the same rules in here you don't straight copy and paste from Word into this message body because it will grab that that invisible HTML code you can't see right and then your formatting is all messed up and you lose time and energy trying to fix it so you'll need to go through either notepad for you pc users or through text editor for you um, mac users like myself but basically you come in here this is the body of your message this is the autoresponder this is what it says so all of you got autoresponders from me right when you signed up for this course and they were branded and I created templates. So you'll see down here at the, at the end, I have a template button so I can click on templates. Now I've created these three. There's one for um, autoresponders and broadcasts. There's my newsletter and there's my techie tips um, template. Now these are all HTML based. I created these outside of one shopping cart and pulled them in. So I can select and it'll basically overwrite. Here it is. Do you see how it pulled it in? That whole template I did outside and I pulled it in and created a template. So every time I want to use it, all I have to do is pull it up. Yes, you can type Donna directly into the message body. If you're copying, pasting though, you have to go through Notepad. Does that make sense? Yeah, you can certainly you can certainly type everything in here. I'm just saying for those that have created, you know, if you're a VA, a lot of times you'll get an AR or a broadcast that your client typed in Word. You can't just copy and paste straight in there. That's what I was talking about. Okay, good.
All right, so you can see that this is all here. Everything's done. It's all done. Now all I have to do is type in my information where it goes. Yes, custom templates are awesome and they do save a ton of time. Um, if you, but that's what you want to do if you want to set these up for you. And for those of you who, who are, are clients going to hire a VA, make sure that you understand that you need to do this. This is part of the setup of your one shopping cart. Uh, Deborah, what program did you use to prepare the templates? I use Dreamweaver. Um, Dreamweaver is one of several um, programs. It's an HTML editor. It's, it's, it's also does all different kinds of editing, but that's what I use. And I have known Dreamweaver for some time. Uh, Sue, are there templates that One Shopping Cart offers or do we create them from scratch? Nope, One Shopping Cart doesn't really have. Um, they have a, a new template feature, uh, but it's not like the templates you're going to be used to from using One Shopping Cart, oh, One Shopping Cart, sorry, AWeber or um, uh, Constant Contact. Latoya, Susan, how did you do the signature? Ah, good question. You know what I did? I um, took a piece of paper and a felt tip pen and I wrote my name on a piece of paper. I scanned it into my computer and I made an image out of it. That's what I did. I mean, I'm sure, and I did that years ago. I'm sure there's easier ways to do it now, but that's what I did. Will you eventually be doing a Dreamweaver class? Yes, yeah, that's on my, yeah, that's, that's a monster only because uh, to use Dreamweaver, you really need to understand how to do HTML and FTP, but that that is something that's on the horizon for next year. So thanks for that question. Okay, so did I answer everybody's question? Sue, did I answer your question? Latoya, did I get yours? <laughs> Latoya, that's a neat way to do the signature. Yeah, I, I'm sure there's there's a better way, but um, a few years ago, I'm like, hey, I'm just going to do it this way because it what came to me. <laughs> Judy, do these images upload as a template without the image being hosted outside? You can actually host um, your images on um, one shopping cart, but you can also host them outside. Donna, that's how I did it, scanned the signature. Oh, good, I wasn't alone. <laughs> uh, Judy, oh, I haven't found that place yet. Okay, so um, I can show that real quick. Um, Judy, this button right here, the tree, you click on the tree, it brings up this insert edit image and you click on this button here at the end of the image URL is browse. Here's where you would upload under manage your media. This is where you would upload your images or any kind of documents. So that's just kind of a quick shortcut for you. All right, anyway, so I'm just showing you, this is what I would do to create my broadcast and then I would type text here. And then, oops, I can't spell. And then obviously you do your formatting, you know, you select, you can bold, you can change um, all of this stuff to a different size if you want. Right, and then so on. And then down here at the very bottom, I want to save what I did. And then what I can do is I could click new uh, next message and I can create a second message, right? So now I have more than one. And then I could put the number of delays in here so I could say two and so on and so forth, and then save. So now I have two messages. So this would go two days after the first one. Oh, thank you, Kim. Your, your, uh, <laughs> your signature's quite cool. Um, I thought that was me. No, Judy, you're good. Okay. All right, so just for time's sake, I'm gonna push forward, but um, the other thing that's cool is you can send yourself a test, which I always recommend that you do. Okay, so that's an autoresponder. So let's real quickly look at a broadcast. So it's still under email and marketing, it's under broadcast. Okay, these are all broadcasts that I have been that I have sent. Um, and these are my drafts. And notice that you have the ability to look at, you know, how many failed, how many were open. You can get all that kind of good stuff. But real quick, I'm gonna send a broadcast. And here you have link tracking, which yeah. You know, we'll track any links, click throughs and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then your contact type. Here's where you can send it to your entire contact list. So like you're easy and you want to send it to everybody. Or you could send it just to prospects, customers, affiliates, all that kind of stuff. Or if I click on autoresponder campaign, which you can see I have 83 of, I can choose one list or multiple list that I can send something to. So I could send it to all these people who've purchased things from me, or I can just send it from people who have signed up for things for me, right? 
and I would just click on it and push it over. Like here's the one for the shopping cart that you guys are in. Okay. And I can do multiples and I can just push them back and forth. I can also do stored searches. So you can search for people who live in a specific location, have a specific job. And basically it's just a stored search that you create that you could send uh, a broadcast to. And then here's your from name, your email, your subject. And then you have the option here to either send it now or later. Now, now means it goes in the queue with everybody else and it will go out as soon as possible. Later would mean obviously later and you could determine. Now, even though I'm in Pacific time, this is still configured in Eastern time. And so sometimes my, unfortunately, the people on my list will get a screwed up email for me because I forgot to do the three hour time conversion. <laughs> but this one's in Eastern time. So you have to make sure you look at that when you're sending and scheduling. Okay, and then down here is your section of your email content. And again, here is the text version, which means there's nothing pretty about it, right? There's no, there's no buttons, there's nothing, there's no images, but you also can do HTML, okay? And from HTML, I have the same buttons, and I, if I have a template, now remember, I can just type, type in here, but if I want to copy paste, I need to go through Notepad, or I need to go through um, Text Editor, or I can use a template. So like, here's my newsletter template. See it? Now, I would have to go in here and, and obviously move everything out, but the, I created this template in um, HTML and then pulled it over here. But you see how easy it would be for me or my VA to come in and just update this information, okay? And then you always wanna save a draft, okay? Now, because I chose later, it's yelling at me, so I have to go back to now here. And this doesn't matter. The send broadcast doesn't matter until you're ready to send an email. So I'll hit save draft. Judy, by using the code, we will get the person's name in there. Yes, you will get the person's name in there as well. All right, let me just remove this because I want to show you how to send this. So let me find a test. Aha, easing test. This way it won't go to anybody but myself. There we go. So let me push that over there. Okay, so here's my easing. So I would go in and make all these kind of changes. I could either type it in, I could copy and paste it in, whatever would be easiest. Then I save myself a draft. Okay, I could also save it as a new draft. But what I wanna do is hit send test. And what this does is it sends me a test to my email that I've set up within one shopping cart. And then I can test it to make sure all the links work. It looks like the same way that it's supposed to, just like you test your emails when you do an, an Aweber or one shop or constant contact, you wanna check it in multiple browsers, make sure it looks right. Now, let's say that I come back in here and I decide I wanna send this. What I want to do is hit send email. And if I wanted to send this at a later time, this is where I would set this up. So it's already past this time. So it's 10, 11, 12, 10, 9, 9 10, 11, 12. Can you see I'm trying to do the conversion in my head? Um, 1 p.m. Oops, nope, it's past that. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> I could hit send email. Now notice I have two versions going. I have a text version which is fine because those are for people who can't read the pretty HTML version. And you can see this is gonna to go to three people, which is fine. If I click on preview, I can see what it looks like. Now this one hasn't been updated. This is just a template and this is from 2013. You can see the beginning of the year. Then I hit send broadcast, I say okay. And it tells me it's gonna go in the queue. Okay, and then I'll get an email that, that so I know when it's done. So that's a quick broadcast message. Now, the last thing I want to show you real quick are products. And that's under products, manage projects. Here's all my products, okay? And as I click through these, you can see I have a naming convention for all of these. And for instance, I'll go into this one for Aweber here. I can edit a product. And so, so if you're selling, this is a product, can be a product or a service. It doesn't have to be a physical, tangible product. It can be a service that you provide as well. Uh, Judy, will it automatically set up the text version of the email without me having to rearrange? Um, no, it doesn't set it up for you automatically. Um, like it does in some of the other email tools in one shopping cart, you'll have to set that up for any broadcast that you send. Okay. All right, so back to my product. Um, basically, you have several different tabs here. And so this obviously is the first tab. And, and 
The bare minimum that you need to set up is obviously the name. And notice I have TL and then I have AWeber. TL, so I know, is um, Techumenter Labs. And then you can do different types of pricing. And notice that you have these wonderful little buttons. If I click on them, it'll give me, do I want to do a take payment? Now, take payment would be something like uh, if you do donations or, and it depends on your business model versus a fixed price like mine's a fixed price um, and then i can put in the short and the long description and then i have all these different things so really the the things that are most critical to you when you set up a product in one shopping cart is the name and the price and a description right and then the other thing that you really really need to have are the is the email marketing which this is how you connect a product to an autoresponder so when somebody buys something from you you'll need to tell it what autoresponder they get that says thank you very much for purchasing here's what you bought okay and you can see i and then you would come through here and just click on whatever let's see if i can find it here like here you go you can see that i have this one checked so that means when they purchase this specific product from me they're going to get this specific error so that's how you connect the two all of these other tabs like settings you can do things like sales and, and you can do shipping and you can do taxes and you can do weights and you can do mold i mean you can really go hog wild in here on these um, options you can do like small medium and large um, again remember the shopping cart is for all different um, types of businesses here's your categories you can do an image of your product uh, if it's a digital download you can create that um, link so these are the actual links that it creates so if I hit test it'll show you what it looks like in the cart you can see my branded cart there okay um, you can set up templates you can do some HTML recurring if it's a recurring payment any attributes or even, so my point is I'm just trying to show you all the different things that you can do with products within one shopping cart so Jessica do you know if there's a mobile setting when creating emails in one shopping cart so when clients view the the email on their smartphone it's sized appropriately you know that's a good question um jessica let me follow up with you on that i read somewhere that they were doing some type of a mobile version so let me see where we're at with that one so let me write that down hold on a second you're welcome okay so that kind of kind of as you can see <laughs> One shopping cart isn't just um, something you pick up overnight. It is a very big monster and it, they continue to add things to it. And you also have to realize that, that, that there are subscriptions, which means there are different levels of one shopping cart. So if I, let's see here, I want to just show you what I mean. I'm just going to go to their home page. One shopping cart has several different versions that you can purchase and they keep changing their packages and they have over the years. So if I look at their packages, notice I have three different ones here. I have a plus, a premium and an ultimate. And obviously you pay for what it is that you want. And each one has a little bit different. So if you want the majority of the features in one shopping cart, you have to pay a hundred bucks a month for that. You get user license, you can do recurring billing, you can do affiliate manage. So here's a little bit more about mobile commerce. So I'll check into that for you, Jessica. But And then you can see that this one has more additional things. There's a, a, a whole new shopping cart site that they have rolled out um, that you can put on your website that's brand new. But anyway, my point is, is that for you as a VA or for you as an entrepreneur, there are different versions of this and they all look a little bit different for the ultimate then you get additional um, features that you don't have in just the premium or the plus now the plus is a great place for people to start because it gives you the ability to have up to 500 products you can do recurring billing but you can do most of the things in here that you need except for like affiliate management and things like that so just keep that in mind when you're looking at one shopping cart there are so many features in here but is a great skill for VAs to have because it is one that is in demand. And it's also a great tool for online businesses to use to have kind of an all in one encompassing product instead of paying for five or six little things that you may not be using to full potential. Okay. So backing over to my PowerPoint. So I just gave you some quick uh, tips and tricks on, you know, setting up, talk to you about 
one shopping cart, what it can do for you, some of the misconceptions that people have when working with one shopping cart or even thinking about going to one shopping cart. Oops, sorry. And I saw we had some questions here. So um, Sue, Susan, is that five user license? Can we share those licenses with our team and their businesses or only one or, or only for one business with multiple users? So the five user license will allow five different people to sign in under your one shopping cart account. So you can use those however you want to, but that's access to your account. And that's a great thing to do for people who have a team because you don't want to give out your necessarily your information. If you give it to somebody else, then um, it will automatically um, allow them to log in under something else. Latoya, do you use this in your own VA business or did you just have it on your service list? Um, I, I began, Latoya, um, with it. Um, as a service that I provided. And then as I started to move and my business started to transition, I went ahead and, and I actually obviously use one shopping cart. So I use it as a business owner now. Yeah, Judy, it's like a seed on Infusionsoft. Exactly. It's exactly the same way. So thank you for that. Okay. So I, I talked to you again about some misconceptions, some setting up of one shopping cart. And then I just really quickly took you through auto, how to set up an autoresponder, how to set up a broadcast and send that out. And then just kind of looking at all the different products that you have. Now, depending on the subscription you have, depends on how many products you can have. Um, and you know, the, the, the base one allows you to have 500. So that's quite a few as well as um, email marketing and that whatnot. So Sue, how easy to upgrade from the first package to the second if you need? Oh, it's easy. You just call Sue, just call one shopping cart and they'll do it for you. <laughs> it's five minutes. That's what I do every time I upgrade to another one. That's what I do. I just call them. And then if you, you know, if you, if you've paid for it, they'll prorate it and do all that fun stuff too for you automatically. So that's the easiest way to do it. So I would just recommend getting on the phone with them and it takes like re really less than five minutes. Okay, so I wanted to introduce to you that I'm actually introducing, just rolling out this class, um, starting in about 10 days, I'm actually gonna be teaching a one shopping cart basics class. And this class will teach you the basics of either um, as a, a VA, so you can support clients that have um, one shopping cart or as a business owner, how to do a lot of these things on your own. Now, I really am a strong believer that as a business owner, you should know some of this stuff yourself in case your, your VA is unavailable and you need to go in and send out a broadcast or you need to go in and adjust a price. You should know the basics of how to use one shopping cart. It is a wonderful tool, but it is a little more complex than some of the other tools on the market. So what do you get? And for those of you taking classes from me before, it's the same basic setup. This class is actually a four um, a four session class. You get three training classes with a um, live Q&A. And this one will actually have your own one shopping cart to test. So you don't need to have a one shopping cart account. So for those VAs who want to pick up the skill, this is a great class for you because you can use a one shopping cart environment to learn these skills so you can then take them and put them to work in your business. So they have homework assignments. If you can't make the live calls, um, there are recordings for everything. So you can certainly grab a recording. So if, if, this, if the time that the live classes are not good for you, you can still sign up because you can still get all the recordings and you still have access to the sandbox and you'll still have access to me for email support. So I'm basically going to show you in this four week course how to set up one shopping cart, manage your contacts, and then all the other pieces that you really need. How to create email templates, autoresponders, broadcasts, broadcast, blah, 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 products, and broadcasts. So this basic course will give you the basics, uh, you know, kind of the meat and potatoes pieces of one shopping cart. So for you VAs who want to do this, this is a great place for you to start. Now there's a lot more to it, but this is a great place and you can support clients out the door. Um, it is on sale for the next week at 117. The price will go up on the 18th. And for the first 10 people to sign up, you will get an, an additional $25 coupon for any classes that I teach um, that you can use between now and the 31st of the end of the year, which I cannot believe is not that far away. So I'm rolling this out to you guys first. 
Um, class size is limited. So um, if this is something that you're thinking about doing or that you're gonna wanna do, then go ahead and take a look. Um, the website where you signed up for this course is now the sales page. So it's at techiemanerlabs.com forward slash one SCART. So one S CART. Um, take a look at that. I will be sending out a, a, a blast for those of you who are listening um, to the recording. But again, for those people who are solopreneurs and for VAs, this is a great way to get yourself some time in one shopping cart if you're not sure you want to use it or two, you want to support this as a service because I do know as, as a business owner, as a VA, this was a, a skill that was always in demand. Um, Deborah, what are the dates of the classes? The class starts on the 21st which is a Monday, so Monday the 21st, and it's at 12 Pacific time, and it goes from the 21st through the 11th of November. And all that information is on there, but thank you, I should have probably added it to this page. So what questions can I answer for you on what you've seen today? Hopefully I've given you some good tips and tricks that you didn't um, know before, maybe given you some ideas about whether or not you wanna use one shopping cart, maybe answered some questions for those of you who are using it and you know needed some additional support. Yeah, it comes out to be about $30 per class. So, I mean, it truly is very reasonable pricing for what you're getting. Um, and, you know, this is the first time I'm teaching this. So this price will this price will go up um, probably after the second time that I've teached this. So you guys get it at the grand floor price. But trust me, it's still great. Any questions, comments? I'm open for anything at this point. If you have any comments or even any questions about anything we didn't cover, I'm happy to help. Thank you, Judy. She said, this has been great. Donna, as always, Susan, thanks so much for your time and the great overview of One Shopping Cart. You are welcome. Kim Brown, thanks, Susan, your webinar is very informative. Thank you. Another skill, so another rate increase. That's right. That is great. All right. Remember, the more skills you have, especially the ones that are in demand, the more money you can make as a VA. Deborah, thank you. Very good information and enjoyed your class as always. Thank you. Thank you. And I thank you guys for being here on a Friday afternoon. Judy, I want to go into the group to brag about your delivery. Excellent program. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. I, I appreciate that. Anybody else questions or comments? Okay, so for those of you that are listening to the recording, um, feel free to shoot me any emails at susan at and I'll be happy to answer those for you as well. I will be sending out this recording uh, probably late today. And again, um, class is only 117 between now and um, next Friday. So, and, and seats are limited to the first 30 people. So if you're interested, grab it because I'm not sure there are any other live one shopping cart classes that have the sandbox. So this is a great deal. So thank you again, everybody. Uh, the address again. Yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Hold on. There it is. Judy, it's techiementorlabs.com forward slash one, shot, one SCART, one S CART. And I'll also be up updating my um, Techie Mentor Labs page here as soon as I jump off the phone. Um, and for those of you that come to my free webinars, oops, I didn't mean to click on that, but I did. I'm going to be having some additional um, October webinars, so look for um, these shortly. They'll also be on my techiementorlabs.com on the schedule page. Uh, I'm going to have one for sales and landing pages, so if anybody wants to learn some tips on that, some additional WordPress tips, and then some project management tips. Those will be coming out um, in the next couple of weeks. And Latoya, do you think it would be wise to learn the email marketing tools before one shopping cart? Latoya, it really depends on where you want to go. Uh, in my opinion, is if you want to have a skill that's in need, I would go with the one shopping cart over the email marketing um, at this point. But you, it's always good to know both. But if you're asking me, I would go for this skill before. Mm 
You are welcome. Okay, thank you again, everybody. I don't want to keep you. It is now um, 11 o'clock Pacific time, so our hour is up. Thank you again. I hope to see you back on um, it, some more of my free webinars that are coming up, and I also hope to see you in my One Shopping Cart class coming up in a couple weeks. If I can do anything for you, please feel free to drop me a note. Thank you, everybody, for your time. I do appreciate it. Go and have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.